I was feeling somehow in the body, but because Pastor Michael is here, said, I'm going to overcome that weakness and come and invite him. Amen. Amen. Because this man here, let him already walk up. Let's come on now. Let's uh -uh. do it. Hallelujah. 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 Michael, you will forgive those who did not stand. We have many new people today. Michael, those who stood are those who really know you. Thank you for your grace. Please, you can take this. Thank you for the love and the honor. Michael is an apostle of this ministry in ways that I cannot describe. Michael, but he's best out in Kampala. And when you teach Kampala. At the moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. He visited us for a little bit. And I want him to. Uh, and the seeds you have sown, those writings, those decisions, those policies, those radical steps have now taken off. You know, Pastor Freddy can tell you. <laughs> and uh, when I look at the foundations, and now we are flaring, going up now, we give God the glory. But the honor also comes to you. Akwat Michael, korari hi cho 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 yo chik cho 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 ga miro telwa mani chani dongtia tuara tuara kwat Freddy Romuko bingo ame tia tiye endo wano miyo ba kuogo endo dawte miyo waro bo repeat te kotere. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please greet us. Moro agiri. Praise the Lord. And I will task you now after the greeting. You are going to invite. Because you are not only you are not a visitor, you are a real homeboy. Pastor Reverend Richard has been teaching us very deeply about the second coming of Jesus, humbling us to the core. Reverend Richard You get the honor to be invited by Pastor Michael. Can you imagine? Praise Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Michael. Amen. I come from Kole district. Amen. I traveled yesterday in the evening. Amen. And I told the bishop, my bishop, Bishop George, that I will be here. Bishop George, And I called Bishop James. I said, I want, I will come for service. Bishop James, it's a pleasure to be here. I came with. I didn't come with my family, but I decided to come. I came with my sister. And the children. This woman is so important to me. I hope while I'm away, you take care of her. In our culture, and somebody marries for you a wife, that person is really important until you build your life. Even when your wife decides to leave you at some point or dies, but that person who married for you will remain important in your life. And that is the woman. Thank you. For him attack. I bring you greetings from Pastor George and my family. As Pastor George, as, as Reverend James asked me to greet, I want to recall a very personal experience as, as part of the greeting. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. I was sharing it with my sister as we drove here. It is a say to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. I told her to read for me in Leblanc. It was very strong. 
But that scripture it guarantees it determines the outcome for the righteous people saying that whatever they go through the end must be well. It is a, a report card which is given before you finish the exams. So that even if you are going through hell, you might even lose a leg. You might lose a husband. You might lose a child. You might lose a wife. But the guarantee of the end is that as long as you are righteous and you have some good works and some of the good works is building the church some of the good works is serving in the ministry the guarantee is even if the mess was caused by you and many times the mess is caused by us even if that workplace mess was caused by you the guarantee is that the end will be well when God anoints us he guarantees the end no matter the behavior in between sometimes I cause mess by myself as long as I go to him and I say I have messed up he remains on the defense because that scripture must be fulfilled that for the righteous for you and me as long as you have some good works the end must be guaranteed the end of that battle you must win 2008 we are expecting our very first child. And he it was August. So many things happen in one week. Bishop James was preaching here. Bishop James He spoke a prophetic word. And the local of Medwarping about traveling to nations. I hadn't traveled to the nations. The word was accelerated and together. My boss was supposed to go to a conference in the UK. And he decided not to go. He decided to send me. Few weeks down, I came here I said, Bishop, I am supposed to go. He prayed for me. He spoke things about Great Britain that I did not know. I submitted my application for visa. The day they told me my visa was approved. My wife was not well. So we went to scan the baby. One dog the word that was scanning said the baby's dead. At eight months, we had bought clothes. We had bought clothes. We were ready to have a first child. So I have a visa and a first ticket to fly. Accelerated by the pulpit here connected to the good works we had done here. I still see the windows that we had put together. And I'm glad you are building a better cathedral. But the baby was dead. I asked my wife, I said, should I go and pick the visa? He said, first go and pick. My boss, when I reached Kampala, said, should we cancel? 
I said, first wait, I go back to my wife. I left my wife in the hands of those of Claudia. They spent two days in Lira Hospital, between Lira Hospital and downtown. Horrible experience to deliver, to deliver a dead child. The church came home the, 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 the coffin slept in my house alone. I was with my wife and a coffin. And a few people. And someone in that week sent a word. Said, that is good for Pio Michael. He wanted his wife to study. Now let her bury the child and go and study. Those ones I've never told Bishop. <laughs> so the next day, we went and buried. Bishop came and buried that child. Bishop and this scripture. Bishop George sent it to me. Bishop George Chualobora. And he said, Pastor Michael, Michael. For the righteous, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. And he gave me the scripture. He said, You might go through hell. And the baby will not resurrect, I know. <laughs> you will bury the baby. But I want you to know one day. You will forget about that. Today, I don't even feel the pain of that day. Because for the righteous, God has guaranteed in his word, in his blood, in the anointing, that whatever hell you go through, it must be be well at the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you go through, even if you are the one who has caused the trouble, God has guaranteed that it must be well. So I want to leave you with that message. Whatever you are going through, I came with a word of encouragement that God in heaven has guaranteed that 10 years down, 20 years down, 15 years down, 30 years down, when you remember the hell you are going through with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with your clan leaders, with your bosses, God has sent me here to pass a report card that the end will be well because because you have good works so what you have to do what you have to do while hell has broken loose go and sell your goat and buy a window while hell is breaking loose go and sell your simsim and buy iron sheets when you are in hell and you see that scripture what you have to do is to increase your good works increase your good works go and visit the poor go and preach the gospel go and build the cathedral go and serve the pastor the more good works the more heaven is jealous of you the more good works the more God is jealous of you I told Pastor George even if I mess up God has to defend me instead of the person I have messed up. Because of my good works. God bless you. Let me take the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Let me take the honor to welcome the men I respect. A powerful apostle and teacher of the word. To bless the church. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Let's continue to appreciate Michael for giving us the message.